Hello again, everybody. Welcome back in to Pro Football Plus with Ben Parker and Austin Freed and Shane Ratliff. And we are more than halfway through this NFL season now. We're excited to have you back, the audience, as always. And again, thank you for the ones of you who listen to us every single week. We appreciate that. And those of you who drop in every once in a while or maybe first time, thank you for jumping in on us as well. We have so much to talk about tonight. We're doing Struggle Bus, Lead Story, Lead Story. Um, I've got another guessing game for Shane and Austin that I, I'm really entertained by and interested in, too. Got Final 60. Uh, man, we are absolutely loaded. So let's get right to it. Shane, uh, your first lead story coming off of this NFL Week 9. My first lead story is uh, I think when you watch pro football and you understand the amazing athletic talent of everyone that's made it to the NFL, and then you watch Saquon Barkley, <laughs> 180 reverse <laughs> jump after also probably one of the sickest spin moves and foot plants. Um, I, I don't know. How, I probably would have just stopped the game. I would have been right. like, okay, we're done. I mean, I think fully the Jaguars basically did, but I mean, that was, that was just impressive. And you could see, I've seen a lot of the videos lately of them showing the Eagles sideline where you just see every player is turning around, shaking their head, all mouthing words that I can't repeat on the podcast. Um, but that that was what stuck out to me. I mean, especially living in New York, there's an awful lot of unhappy Giants fans that watch that happen. Man, I am telling you what, that was, that was, I mean, just stop it, right? I mean, that was just disgusting. You go from things that not many people can do to things that I don't know if anybody else can do with that, right? I mean, that's, that's insane. So I, the whole, the whole NFL universe was entertained by that. Uh, Austin, your lead story coming off of uh, the NFL week. Uh, mine's Baker Mayfield, who has completely turned around the narrative like of his entire career. He, you know, came out of that big rookie season and then kind of fell off and was bounced around Carolina, shows up in Los Angeles for a little bit, establishes himself in Tampa, gets paid in Tampa. But it's kind of always under the, the guise of, yeah, he's doing it, but with Mike Evans, with Chris Godwin. Uh, well, he doesn't have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin anymore. His leading receiver this week, Kate Otten, the tight end, Sterling Shepard, and Trey Palmer. Mm. Uh, and he's getting it done, and he looks good doing it against a really good Chiefs defense. He went for uh, 23 completions on 31 attempts, 200 passing yards, and two touchdowns, no interceptions, and led a game-tying drive in the rain with – like a minute and 30 on the clock when it started, led a game tying drive, throws a touchdown. Uh, unfortunately, the NFL still hasn't changed its overtime rules, but that's not what this is uh, about. That might go on the struggle bus, actually, the NFL overtime rules. That's, mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Put the shield on there, baby. <laughs> See, I'm with you. All right, I'm going to triple whammy myself here because sometimes I'm wrong too. I, I, I was not a huge Baker Mayfield believer when he came out of college. And I'm not a huge believer in paying uh, middling quarterbacks a ton of money because it eats up too much cap space. And I kind of chuckled at the Buccaneers when they were talking about running it back off of last season. The, you know, what are you running it back? Ha-ha. But, you know, they are in there fighting, and Baker Mayfield is in control of the offense. I mean, he just is. You know, sometimes he throws some picks, and sometimes his decision-making isn't great. But, boy, he's in control of the offense. His throws are good. I'm really impressed, you know, and he looks like he's – reinvigorated rediscovered himself however you want to phrase it so absolutely love it um for for baker mayfield uh here here's a list of my first lead story my first lead story page here the commanders just continue to roll man i mean the feel good vibes coming out of this place are fantastic they're seven and two the lions just continue to be on absolute cruise control um just kind of plowing down anything in their path at the moment so hats off to them Cardinals are five and four. Not sure everybody had that. Some people did, some not. Rams are up to four and four, being dangerous again after a huge win in Seattle. We'll take Sean McVay off the struggle bus here in a couple of minutes. The Panthers, of course, <laughs> with a shocking, uh, shocking victory that had some uh, domino effects. We'll talk about the second, and then the Cowboys continue to sink. Big stories everywhere in all of these games, and we didn't even have room to put everything on here. So uh, another just blast of a of a of a. Uh, of a uh, of the season here i'm going to roll into lead story number two here for me and then we'll get the y'all's lead stories uh dennis allen he's gone i don't think anybody's surprised by this there were already rumblings of him kind of sort of being on a hottish seat heading into this season 
And then you had the seven straight losses, which, you know, that may not all be his fault considering the injuries, but still, I think the kicker was when you lose to the Carolina Panthers, you know, so that, that really on top of everything else, kind of a seat already being warm and, and losing to Carolina after six other straight losses, it, that, that was it. So um, Austin and Shane, I'm going to get to Shane first here. Reaction to this firing, but then I also want to know 2025 and beyond, what's a name or two that you think you would like to see, regardless of what the Saints think, what you would like to see, Shane, coaching the Saints? I mean, uh, I think it's zero surprise. Uh, I mean, back when we did the coaching run-throughs of the NFC, he was ranked on a lot of ours as the last one. Um, uh, when you have a car quarterback and you're him, you know that you're going to get let go. So, I mean, I'm sure he also thought this was on its way as well. Um, I mean, when you're talking about people that are – the real thing will be who wants to go to New Orleans because you yeah. would think that – they have an opportunity now to kind of go and get what they want. Um, I think they look offensively. I think they go, they probably offer some money to Ben Johnson. I think Cliff Kingsbury is going to get another, as you mentioned, Washington already. Um, I think there's some other offensive guys out there that are going to get an opportunity. Uh, with Dennis Allen, it's it, it just hasn't been solid coaching. I mean, he has had, He's one of those guys that has just had a bad record when he's the head coach. We've talked about it before. Maybe some guys are just better as assistants. Um, and I think this is the case for him. Yeah, I agree. And, and listen, I I do feel like he'll be one of those guys that comes back as a coordinator in the afterlife, a coordinator in the afterlife, right? And starts to get some revenge that way. But the head coaching stuff, by and large, was, was a struggle to say the least. Austin, first impulse on this, and then uh, maybe a coach or two. Yeah, so I think it was the right move. Uh, I probably had peg him pegged as my most likely coach to get fired this season, to be honest. Uh, so I'm, I'm not surprised at all. When talking about his future replacements, I think a really underrated uh, guy who's not being talked about as a potential head coach next year, he's definitely going to get interviews. I don't know if it'll actually materialize to anything, but Wes Phillips, the offensive coordinator in Minnesota, he's done – Lots of good work this season. I think he's going to have a good shot. I think you bring him as head coach, um, you know, see what he can do with an offense. I think if I'm a, uh, some wanting a GM wanting to hire a new coach right now, the trend right now is hire offensive minded head coaches. They seem to have the higher ceilings. I'm done with these uh, defensive minded head coaches, letting uh, like an OC, you know, control the offense. I want my head coach, to be the offensive mastermind, and that's why I want Wes Phillips uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, and Austin, I'll go along those lines and then make a, a defensive coordinator coming in. Uh, not a defensive coordinator, def defensive guy coming in, kind of a pick here. Um, ben Johnson's your number one name for almost any job, right? You know, Absolutely. He, he seems to have the, the vibe and, and the energy, and he's been part of success, and he's got obviously the XO thing all – all over the place. So, uh, but again, like Shane mentioned, maybe not everybody wants to come here to New Orleans necessarily. So we'll, we'll see about that. After that, Mike Vrabel was a name that instantly came to mind here for the Saints. Just a good, solid, solid football coach. Um, no matter where you actually rank him, just a good football coach. If he can put his staff together and if he can get some young talent coming back through New Orleans, I, I would be very interested at least in, in watching a guy like him come to New Orleans. So those are some names. And again, we'll talk about that more, but we do like to jump on it before it just actually happens during the playoffs or something. And we don't even get to talk about prospects for the Saints job here. So um, uh, Dennis Allen moving on and, uh, and we'll catch that later. All right, let's move to the back pages. These again are stories or people that maybe tend to get lost after some of the headlines. So I'm going to hit mine first again here. Um, the Colts, they lost, man. All right. And and as, by the end of the game, it wasn't even all that uh, close necessarily. But, boy, they hung tough. And I have not given enough credit to, on air, to a, a triangle here. And Chris Collinsworth mentioned it on air. He was right about it. But this this group of Grover Stewart at defensive tackle and uh, DeForest Buckner at defensive tackle and Zaire Franklin at linebacker is quite a triangle sitting there. And you talk about just some strength. And it was obvious – 
that it gave Minnesota trouble. And if Minnesota's weak anywhere, it can be on the middle of that offensive line, right, before the tackle got injured anyway. The middle of that offensive line can be pushed back sometimes, and especially by a good triangle like this. But I'm telling you, this Colts triangle right here with Stuart Franklin Buckner would be the envy of a lot of NFL teams. You know, for instance, the Cowboys. You know, that strength up the middle is just vicious, and it was giving the Vikings trouble. But it's it's been helping the Colts kind of stay alive in a lot of these games because that secondary just but as a group is not a good secondary. So really, really impressed here. Um, it, listen, it's in the running game, first of all. Stewart pushing through. You can see him constantly getting pushed up the middle. And then, of course, Butner's been doing this for years, just push up the middle really making the running game difficult, and that tends to put offenses kind of behind the chains already. Offenses that want to run on first down and make it, you know, second and five, struggling to do that. That's a big thing for the Colts here. And then Zaire Franklin's just lights out, making plays here, running through traffic, reading plays, reading the running plays. I mean, he was tremendous too, but they've been doing that for several games now. I haven't given them enough credit for that. But then once you get to, say, second and eight now, or third and six, now you're in predictable passing situations, which gives Zaire Franklin room to do all kinds of reading. And it gives these two guys room, if they want to, to kind of start to push the pile and, and get pressure on the quarterback on these predictable passing situations. You're not quite so worried about the run. So uh, even though the Colts lost and, and the, the offense struggled here, uh, hats off to this triangle right here, this trio, for really producing some fantastic strength up the middle not just this game, but all the season so far, and they will continue to do so. Uh, Grover Stewart, especially not a name that a lot of us have, have used very often. So, um, Shane, back to you. Back page story, front page, trades, whatever, man, lay it on us. Uh, my back page story kind of falls in with uh, what Austin was talking about. I also hate the NFL overtime rule. Uh, and, like, if I was the Patriots this week, Drake May makes an amazing backyard play to get you – and then you barely make an extra point, you know, to play for the overtime. You know, if you're in college where you're guaranteed that everyone's going to get a shot and we can keep making plays and we can do things like that, then I get it. Tie it up. We're going to have an equal opportunity. That's not what happens in the NFL. And you already have a team that's not great. Like the Patriots won this loss. You lost anyway. So does it worse for you to go and take a chance after making a great play? You know, sometimes I think, again, that's when you have a head coach that's not an offensive coordinator. It's why in the press conference this week when they talked to Ben Johnson, he said, if I take a head coaching job, I'm calling the place. Um, right. You want the man in charge to be the guy that's always thinking about that. I'm not saying you can't be a great coach and be a defensive coordinator, but – I think you in the NFL need to always be thinking about points. Um, you know, it, it's become a run and shoot league where it's whoever can score the most is going to be the one that's going to make it out nine times out of 10. And so you're trying to add points to the board as quickly as possible. And those end of the game situations like that, it's to, in the NFL, I would go for two just to be able to pull away. I'd rather have to explain that we lost because we didn't get two points than to say, oh, well, we didn't get even an opportunity to put our offense out there. Yeah, agreed. See, I'm all for tying the game, but not when you may not get the ball back, you know? I mean, that totally flips the decision-making process for me. But, uh, yeah, the overtime rule, I'm ready for that to change. That that needs to go away. Man, I, I would hate for, to see that influence this year's playoffs, you know? So I'm, I, I wish they would just step in now. They can't, I guess, but I, I wish they would just step in now and take care of that. Uh, Austin? I wanted to talk some trades. It's the trade deadline just like passed a few hours ago. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is, this is hot off the press stuff. Uh, I just want to talk about a few of them. I don't have time to talk about all of them here. My favorite ones, not necessarily the most impactful, just ones that I, as a fan appreciate the most Tredavious white to the Ravens. I really like that one. Mike Williams to the Steelers. He's coming off an ACL injury. He hasn't looked good, but like he tore his ACL last September. It's he's going to get healthier throughout the season. Steelers are looking to make a playoff push. The Steelers also traded for Preston Williams uh, or Preston Wilson or yeah, Pre Preston Smith. Too many Prestons. Uh, Preston Smith is who, uh, who they traded for on the defensive side of the ball. And then probably my number one favorite one of the whole trade deadline was Marshawn Lattimore. To the commanders, man, the commanders have had 
a really good season. Their like biggest weakness is that secondary. I think I wasn't a fan of their draft pick in this class. And I think they, they got a good one here with Marshawn Lattimore, who can definitely still play ball at a very high level. I also heard the chiefs were in on the Lattimore sweepstakes. So I think that's mm-hmm. even sweeter uh, for them in Washington to, to get their guy and keep him away from KC. Washington, a destination place, man. How about that? People want to go there. <laughs> it's been decades. So. I, I can think of two other guys who were trying to go there tonight or two other people. Uh, I'm trying to make an election joke. It's, didn't didn't land, but. <laughs> I've got a little thing on the election coming up in our final 60. It won't be any endorsements or anything. I'll probably still tick off somebody, but I'll, I'll try not to. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, the trades are a lot of fun and uh, watching the commanders grab a guy like that because I, it hasn't happened yet. I've kept waiting on that commander's defense to get exposed, and it hasn't happened. But I do like that they are acknowledging, hey, we could use some more talent in the secondary here. And, man, these trades are like, man, you're, they're costing these people nothing. Fifth-round picks, sixth-round mm-hmm. picks. What have you got to lose, honestly, at those rates, right? That's that's a that's a buyer's market, man. So I love it. Struggle bus. Here it comes. Sad for some. Not so sad for others. Uh, first, first order of business. Let's get Sean McVay off of there. His team is four and four, and they are dangerous, and 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 they got a good chance to be what I thought they might be at the start of the season. So let's get him off of there. I think everybody agrees with that. I've already added, obviously, Dennis Allen on here, who's not even going to get to coach the rest of the season, so he'll be a passenger on there along with Robert Sala. I put Mike McCarthy on here too. And I'm not blaming Mike McCarthy for the Cowboys' woes. It's obvious they have some roster problems and injury problems, okay? But, you know, uh, he's struggling, you know, and he might even be the guy who pays the price for it at the end of the season. We'll see because Jerry Jones ain't firing himself and he ain't firing his son and he ain't firing anybody else high up in that Cowboys hierarchy. So if anybody's going to go, it would be McCarthy. But uh, McCarthy definitely on the struggle bus. For sure. And I added one little caveat. Some of y'all, you know, if you're watching on your phone, you can't even see it on the screen. But some of these guys that are off the struggle bus now have moved into some apartment buildings, some penthouses here. So the ones on the bottom floor maybe aren't lighting it up yet, but they're working their way up here. And then, of course, Kirk Cousins is already up on the third floor here because he's just tearing it up. He's on fire right now. So you can get off the struggle. There's always hope, right? As long as you're in the game, you can, you can always get off the struggle bus and into the, into the apartment building and back up maybe to the penthouse up there. So uh, uh, hats off to those guys for working their way off of the struggle bus. Uh, Shane, you first. Uh, anybody you want to put on tonight or reactions to anybody we got here? I mean, I, I think you covered the one that I was an automatic for me was going to be Dennis Allen and the Saints. Um, you know, I think a ton of things have gone wrong for him. I don't think this is totally on him, but I also don't think he's been a good coaching choice for them. Um just a uh, brutal play. I mean, not only who you lose to, but they did not look good in any phases of the game. Um, and they've continued to have problems and they don't seem to ever change anything to fix those problems. I understand, you know, there's they they looked good offensively the first two games when they had their actual offensive line out there. And then now that run game has been eaten up, but the saints were on the struggle bus and Dennis Allen obviously now needs some place to live. So he can take that second seat. There you go. Um, shout out to Simon Short, who's part of Box Score Network that we're affiliated with on here, me and Austin both. And um, he put out an article. I, I posted it on my X account. I'm, I'm going to suck at marketing here, so I apologize. If you follow me on X, you can see his, his article that I put up. It was about the Saints, and I thought he really did a good job of telling what the Saints might should do from here moving forward. Austin, struggle bus. Yeah, I've got Matt Eberflus of the uh, Chicago Bears hopping on the bus, to be honest. It's it's not looked good there. Caleb Williams was a member early. He scooched himself off. I thought about saying he should get back on, but I really don't think he's the problem here. Um, no, he hasn't looked great, but the team as a whole seems pretty dysfunctional, not just Caleb Williams, and that obviously goes on the head coach. See, and I agree. The past two games have been very ugly, right? Not even really all that competitive. That's kind of the big problem. And I'm not an Eberflus guy. I don't mean to slam him here, but even during the offseason, we were going through our coaches. I was like, man, I'm just not sure Eberflus is the guy to get this done. But then, you know, 
I think they're four and two at one point. It's like, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, now we're back into non-competitive football again, which is a big problem considering the roster you got. So I'm inclined to agree with that. We'll get them on there next week. All right, that's the struggle bus. We are moving on to our matchup of the week. And before we do that, we're going to do a little bit of accounting here. Uh, last week, uh, Shane hit big on his bet with the uh, – well, I don't remember what he bet on. But anyway, uh, I think he had the uh, Lions winning, right? That's what he bet on, put a huge bet on it. So he's at 172 now. And uh, his uh, his goat uh, goat farm's getting pretty big here. So lots of goats and cheeses everywhere for Shane. He's at 172. Austin pulling in at 68. Last week, me and him both lost our bet with the uh, over on that Lions and Packers game. And then I'm sitting here at 113. So we've got like three, two or three weeks. I, I've lost count. Two or three weeks here to catch up with Shane or he's going to rack up his second PFF plus championship. Our next chance to do that is right here with the uh, Steelers and the commanders on CBS. I believe last I looked commanders two and a half point favorite, something like that. Double check me on that. I'm going to walk us through the statistics as usual. And then we'll hear from these guys about what they think about the game. First of all, offensive DVOA Steelers are in 20th on this commanders are second. No surprise there. Points per game. Steelers a little bit higher at 13th, maybe partly due to field position in the defense. Commanders are in third in points per game. Yards per game. Steelers sitting at 19th. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. They do produce, but not at a high level. Commanders at third, man. I mean, they're lighting it up when it comes to yardage. They're just pulling it off. Passing yards per game. Uh, Steelers are 26th. Uh, commanders are at 11. That surprised me a little bit, but they have been mixing in the running game very well. It's probably pulling down that number. And then rushing yards per game. Steelers at eight. Commanders at third. So commanders statistically, analytically, looking like the offense that we all kind of think we're seeing when we're watching these games. Steelers not a horrible offense, but still pretty much middle of the pack or lower middle of the pack all the way across the board. On the defensive side, Steelers coming in at eight. I mean, they got a good one here. Defensive DVOA, commanders 26th. Points per game allowed. The Steelers are in second in the league here, while the commanders come in at 11th. Not a bad number there for them. Yards per game allowed. The Steelers are in ninth. Commanders 14. Passing yards allowed. This one surprised me. Steelers 21st. Commanders are in fifth. <clears throat> And um, I think that, again, it's a lot of that is game script coming into play there. Rushing yards per game. Steelers are in fourth. Commanders way down the list at 29th. Really, really, really struggling to stop the run. So that is the statistics, gentlemen. Shane, I'll start with you. Uh, what are you feeling about this game and this matchup? I have the commanders in this one. I think it's going to be a tight one. Um, and I think that's really only because of the Steelers' defense. Um I'm still not a fan of the Steelers' offense. I don't really trust it. Um, I think the defense has been the driving factor for them. Uh, I really liked Austin's comment. I thought that the Lattimore pickup was a great pickup for the commanders, uh, especially you give a fifth-round pick. You already have your quarterback, so you know you don't need to make a great splash in this first draft, um, so you can waste some of that extra draft capital and not worry about it. I mean, on the commander's side, I think if you're a Commanders fan, you wish that maybe you could have got this GM staff in here earlier and maybe you didn't trade all your defensive linemen and your linebackers in the last two years because uh, I think the run game would be a lot better defensively if they didn't. Um, but I think the Commanders pull this off. Uh, I think they've won some games that they shouldn't have early in the year and then now they believe that when it's close, um, they're going to be able to pull a win away. We feel good vibes, man, coming out of Washington. Austin. I've also got the commanders. Uh, I do think this is going to be a low scoring game. Uh, you know, the Steelers defense is good and their offense is pretty bad. I think they're going to want to dictate the pace of the game. That's their best shot of winning this thing. If they let the commanders dictate the pace, uh, I think the commanders could potentially run away with it. And we kind of, we've seen that uh, when you're talking about time of possession, the Steelers are sixth highest time of possession uh, uh, on average this year. So that's clearly what they want to do, and that's what they're going to have to do in this game. I just, I think this offense might be just a little too much for the Steelers to handle. See, and that's where I wound up too, man. I, I to me, this is a super tight game. 
And I, it really bugs me to go against Mike Tomlin with the rookie quarterback here. I mean, that part of it really bothers me. But, boy, when I keep looking at Washington, they just look legit. They look real. They, they've got the energy. They're playing at home. The offense is cooking almost every week. Goodness gracious, they are just killing it. And the defense continues to just hold up, you know. I mean, in some cases, even be good. But, you know, it's holding up. So, you know, I got the uh, I got the commanders here, and I forget who mentioned it, but part of that is that Steelers offense too. Russell Wilson is making some throws we haven't seen since Seattle, but still, I just don't know that this Pittsburgh offense is is is, is going to be able to produce enough here to hang with Washington. But I do feel like a tight game here. Let's go back and get everybody's bets here. Let's put some goats and cheeses out there, Shane. Uh, you got a pretty big lead here. How much you going to risk, and what you going to put it on? Uh, I'm going to go. Let's go two goats, and we'll go commanders uh, for the victory. All right. I like it. Austin. Got to make up some ground here. We're getting towards the end. I think it's time to to let it go. Like I said, I'm really confident this is going to be a low-scoring game. The over-under is not that low. I think I'm seeing uh, – let me just double-check this. I saw 46, I believe – uh 45 and a half so yeah i'll take i'll take the under on 45 and a half and uh i'm gonna go i've got 68 goats worth left i believe uh, i'm gonna throw 60 of it six whole goats Ooh, six whole goats man goodness gracious but i i like it under 45 and a half you said right correct that's the line right now all right so uh i too i'm gonna put money i just two goats for now i, I i'm still within Somewhat of a striking distance. I could throw I could throw the whole everything but the kitchen sink at it on the last week if I need to. I'm gonna put two goats on a Washington win as well. Um I, I do like Washington in this game, even though it's tight, man. So um that's that's where I'm gonna go. We'll see. Uh, we've got two or three weeks left to see who gathers up this third championship here, PFF championship up for grabs. We're doing next a guessing game. So I did two of these last week. We don't have enough time to do two of them every week, but I really like this for two reasons. Number one, I love to see uh, Shane and Austin kind of pick their way through it and figure this out. They'll be working as a team again tonight, seeing what they can do. But also, it just highlights uh, certain specific statistics, okay? So um, this is, this one this week is called Scramble Drill. So here we go. Again, depending on what screen you've got, you may struggle to see it, so I apologize. These helmets are all scrambled up. They're out of order, okay? Tonight's topic is defensive EPA, all right? So EPA is one of those complicated stats right that attempts to do a lot of different things with with statistics uh, but the focus is stopping the run so which teams are the best at stopping the run um again these negative numbers actually are good and the positive number down here is actually bad for defense right but defensive epa who's best at stopping the run and who's worse so i've got three teams from the top eight nine in the league i've got three teams who are in the middle of the league and then I've got three teams who are just kind of dragging up the rear here, really, really doing bad at stopping the run. I've got nine teams here. The helmets are all mixed up. And we're going to see. I'm not so much worried about one through nine as I am top three, middle three, lower three. We'll see how good these guys can do. All right, guys, any questions? If not, take it away and figure this thing out, man. Hmm. Is there an obvious one at the top for you? I think I've got one that i like at the top the one that sticks out most for me is the chargers agreed the Bengals are going to be towards the bottom i don't think they're the worst i mean ben just kind of gave us a little hint earlier talking about how bad the commanders are yeah uh, so i think we stick them we'll leave them towards the end we'll leave the Bengals. who else will we, will we throw down at the bottom the raiders probably down there towards the bottom uh, I think the Raiders would be down towards the bottom. I like where the Colts are right now. Colts are pretty good uh, against the run. I'd agree. The Titans are pretty good against the run. They have a really bad pass defense, I think. But yeah, I, think I would they're... put them probably middle of the pack. They would probably be a middle of the packer for me for Titans. Yeah. What about the Seahawks? I really don't have any good reads on the Seahawks. Uh, I mean, I, I think they could be a middle of the pack. I mean, the Bengals defense has not played well. Raiders defense has not played well. San Francisco, I think, defensively is still in an okay spot. I don't know if they'd be in that top three or in the middle three, but I think the bottom would be Washington, 
um Cincinnati and Oakland or I, Las Vegas. Yeah, those are my bottom three as well. Uh, what order? I think probably Oakland last, Washington next to last, Bengals just in front of them. Maybe. Do you like that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Washington. I think Washington next to next last. To last. Washington okay. next to last. Uh, um, I I think I almost prefer the tight. Well, the Cowboys are pretty bad against them. Okay. I almost prefer the Titans in third, if I'm being honest. But I don't know how you feel about that. I'm I okay. Ha- I don't have a I don't have a strong feeling. Do you like the t- I like the Titans more than the Niners to run defense? And yeah, then I'm how okay would you like that. to order these next the ti- the the Niners, the Boys, and the Seahawks? I think it's probably Niners, Seahawks, Cowboys. Okay, I like that too. Let's let's uh, buzz that in. Final answer. All right, so uh, let's do a quick review here before we actually uh, do a reveal, and I'll give you all a chance to change if you do. Uh, Chargers, we like at the top of the list with the Colts and Titans in second and third. That's kind of the top three right there. Big drop-off here to the middle of the pack with, uh, we think, 49ers, Seahawks, and Cowboys. And then here at the back end, we got the, the Commanders, the Raiders, and the Bengals. Any, uh, any additions, any windows, or otherwise? I mean, I've got really no clue uh, for some of these, but I I feel I like our, our where we've kind of put our educated guesses. Yeah, so I think y'all did a good job. I don't have the list memorized. I'm about to just drop the screen down. Y'all can see the chart for yourselves. So, um, but I think y'all did a really good job here. So here's the list. I'm going to move it down so we can kind of see everything again here. Uh, Chargers, definitely the best here for sure. See if I can uh, get this right here. Sorry for the sloppiness of my uh, graphics here. Um, Chargers definitely the best here. So y'all got that right. Colts in second, you got that right. Titans in third. So y'all hit the top three, just one, two, three. Give yourselves a big hand there. That's that's excellent. And the 49ers coming in uh, fourth, I think. I'm looking at that right. You, you nailed that. Here's the big miss, uh, the Raiders coming in uh, fifth after the uh, – wow. after, after the uh, they're just middle of the pack is what they are. The the Seahawks, if I'm looking at this right, yeah. So y'all got the Seahawks right. They should really be right here, but that's good. You got Seahawks middle of the pack. And then hang on here. Let me see if I can get this without screwing it all up. Yeah, so commanders come in at next to last. Y'all have that. The Cowboys suck. They absolutely, totally, completely yeah. suck. So uh really everything's right here. In fact, most of it's perfect, except Cowboys should be at the tail end with the Raiders being more middle of the pack. So that's pretty good, man. I mean, because I don't give y'all any hints about this stuff. None. Like, the only thing is, hey, it's coming. But it it could be anything from coin tosses to uh, Mike Shadahan's, uh, Cal Shadahan's decision-making, right? <laughs> y'all have no clue what topic is coming here. That's actually very good. Uh, that, that's a really good shot. So uh, any more thoughts here on these uh, teams being good or not versus the run? But, I mean, the Cowboys, I should have, I should have put – them lower i i had a feeling they might be down there but i know they're so bad against the pass i couldn't imagine this yep. being this bad against the pass and the run <laughs> is my justification yeah i completely agree with austin that was mine i i knew that they just everyone throws on them and they get beat but i would have thought that they would have been at least a little bit middle ground uh we should have just known that they're the cowboys and they were terrible this year yeah. all right fair enough well good job very very good uh i don't give you any hints so that, that's excellent work all right Time for our final 60 now. And just a heads up, when, when we when we started doing these final 60-second segments months ago with this panel, I told everybody, you talk about whatever you want to talk about, all right? It's, it's your time. It's your 60 seconds. If you piss somebody off, oh, well, okay? And it doesn't necessarily represent what somebody else in the panel thinks, right? Somebody else may think the total opposite, but oh, well, that, that's life. Um, so uh, these these guys have almost, you know, almost complete uh, freedom to do whatever they want, usually – um usually it's almost always good stuff so tonight i'm going in election direction so if you just don't want to hear about the election at all feel free but that's where i'm heading for my final 60 here i'm going back to the 1796 presidential election all right i'm not a history buff necessarily but i do love history this was the third presidential election actually if i remember correctly uh the first two were largely uncontested george washington pretty basically didn't have any challenges there this one was different this was the first time in which two parties had a big influence on this election. 
and it was vicious. Oh, my gosh. Between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, it was vicious. It was mean. Uh, people were worried about Jefferson and his French connections. Uh, there was a lot of mud throwing all over the place. Our forefathers didn't always love each other. <laughs> in fact, sometimes they were quite literally mortal enemies of each other, in spite of their ability to work together on some of these very large uh, agreements that they put together back in the day. And this, this election was number three, but it was the first contested one, and it was vicious. And John Adams wound up winning it 71 to 68 in terms of electoral votes. The popular vote he got, too. You can see the numbers down there, 35K to 30K. But where I'm going to end up with this is we've had a ton of elections in our country's history. We're having another one today. As we sit here, it's roughly 830 at night. Polls haven't even closed for half the country. So I don't even know who's winning right now. I've been too busy working on my shows. I don't know who's winning. I don't know who's losing. But the sun's going to get up tomorrow, and somebody's going to win. Half the country is going to be pissed off, and half the country is going to be celebrated like, like there's no tomorrow, right? But my point is this. Life goes on. Um, you got a right to be angry. That's fine. You got a right to be sad. That's fine. You got a right to feel like this election is, is important because it is. All right. But no matter what, man, life is going to go on and you owe it to yourself to make the best of it. I teach this to my kids. We all teach it to all our kids. You owe it to yourself to just make the best of the next day and the next week and the next year. You know, so, you know, you can be bitter if you want. You can be angry. You can be violent. But I hope that instead you just make the best of, of whatever's coming out of this election. The country might be worse off when we all wake up tomorrow, all right? We may be worse for the next four years, all right? We may hit a turning point that we can't come back from. But still, you as an individual, you have the freedom of choice to make the most of it or not. So I, I hope that you, for your family's sake and for your sake, that you make the most of it, whether it, um, it is something that goes better for the country or worse for the country. I hope that you make the best of your own life and, and, and don't waste it. So that's my, that's my final 60. Uh, Shane, you're up your final 60, man. Well, I, I liked your uh, final 60 right there, Ben. And and just to kind of piggyback off that, the big thing for me is just get out and vote. Uh, for the people that complain but don't do the process, I don't want to hear it. You know, if, if you at least went out and voted, then you can say, hey, my choice didn't make it. And, you know, I think other people are wrong. But if you're somebody that sits at home and, and doesn't get out there and vote and doesn't think it's important, then – your opinion doesn't really matter to me anymore off of that. Uh, my final 60 for that is uh, this is just a great time of year. I love when the fall really kicks in. Uh, Halloween, uh, you know, some households, as soon as November 1st hits, that means it's Christmas. Uh, I'm a guy that likes Thanksgiving, so I don't try to speed through it. Um, but uh, just a great season for me. I live in one of the places where you definitely get all four seasons. Uh, and for right now, it's it's been extremely warm up north for the fall season, so we'll see how that goes. Wow. Did it melt y'all's first snow that you already had a couple of it weeks ago? It did, indeed, yeah. We had snow, <laughs> okay. and then it was it was the highest recorded temperature. It was 82 on uh, Halloween day. So, And that is wow. about 30, 35 degrees plus from what you would normally catch. So, Wow. Goodness gracious. I, I know I know the area you're in, so goodness gracious. That's a, All right, Shane, you're going to roll your eyes at me, and that's okay, man. Um, <laughs> so I'm a Thanksgiving guy, right? I mean, it's my favorite holiday of the year, bar none. I mean, I, I love Christmas, and I, you know, I like, I like all, the, all the holidays, but I'm a Thanksgiving. But my wife's a Christmas person, and what makes the wife happy is on November 1st to trot out every Christmas decoration we can. <laughs> so I spent five hours yesterday. We got two Christmas trees up in the house. I've got Santa and his reindeer on top of my friggin' roof already. <laughs> my well, my little well house has Christmas lights on it. My swing set has lights on it. I mean, these are these are decks decorations we bought last year after Christmas was over. We bought them for like, you know, pennies on the dollar, right? I've got Christmas decorations out the wazoo here, and it makes the wife happy, so I'm happy. So uh life goes on. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I, All right. I'm, with, I'm with you there ben uh we're moving next week uh and as soon as we move in first thing's going up is christmas decorations <laughs> immediately <laughs> that's that's the boss's orders <laughs> i understand we've all been there austin your final six to bed uh, yeah, I haven't talked about uh, you know, any any movies or TV lately, uh, and I wanted to 
do that. Uh, we just started The Walking Dead. Uh, I'd never seen it before. Uh, we are on season three, and I really enjoyed the first two seasons. Uh, I wouldn't say it's it's a show that I'm uh, you know already pining as one of the greatest ever I'm among my top, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's 11 seasons, I believe. And, you know, if it keeps up at this pace, I'm going to get through all 11. Uh, you know, not going to not going to stop watching it until it's over unless it, you know, takes a, some sort of massive dip. Uh, luckily, the show's so far gone and I was so not paying attention to it that I don't know any of the spoilers. If I heard them, I forgot about them because I, I, I was never planning on necessarily uh, tuning into it. So I've got a, a spoiler free. Uh, I think it re was released in 2010. So coming up on 15 year old show. <laughs> Austin, are you big on horror movies as well? Is that a you thing? Um, certain kinds. I like thrillers, which I guess is book, okay. which would be more of the walking dead speed. I don't necessarily care for like the paranormal ones as much, but I do enjoy okay. a good like thriller movie. Okay. Fair enough. Shane, what about you, man? You, you like, I mean, I know walking dead is a horror stuff, but you go out to the extreme horror end of the spectrum. Man. Uh, see, I'm like Austin on that. I like like the, th the thriller. You could be, there can even be like some paranormal that plays in it, but um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the just crazy uh, this house is haunted from 70 years ago. And then, you know, it flips the house around seven times. And it's all like that. I, I think the last one that I saw that was kind of like that was the ring that I even cared about. Um, but for me, I, I prefer more of the kind of, uh, thriller, maybe like a psychotic killer type, uh, horror film, as opposed to the, the blood and gore, um, you know, originals. Shout out quickly to my sister, Sarah, who lives uh, down on the coast of uh, South Carolina. She loves The Walking Dead. Uh, I think watched it basically from the get-go. So uh, one of my four sisters that I have, so uh, she, she eats that stuff up. I did want to mention, because we are affiliated with the Box Score Network. We There's several shows on there. Um, because CONCACAF, I've talked about how good we are at NFL stuff, and we are. But Because CONCACAF is a, um, is a show dedicated exclusively to soccer. And they don't just cover one league. They basically cover them all. I mean, USA, Euro, you name it. And th that's not easy. There's a lot of soccer leagues out there, but uh, they cover it all. So I give you a, 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 just a shout out there. Go check them out. Apple, Spotify, podcast, um, because CONCACAF. Andy was on here, surprised us as a guest here about three or four weeks ago. Um, so go check him out. Good guys, good show, especially if you love soccer all right that's basically it um austin i want you to tell us uh where everybody can find your show tricky takes and maybe anything else that you're doing these days as well yeah uh come check us out apple spotify we're on a couple other the smaller places as well tricky takes uh it's me and my two buddies talking um these days mostly about uh, football but we're doing a big world series recap tomorrow and talking about the whole mlb season and like the mvp winners and that kind of stuff so if you you know are a big baseball fan or if you missed a lot of the baseball season and kind of want to hear what happened come check us out uh this week tricky takes that world series i it was five, it was only five games right but yeah man. it was I've never seen that much good stuff cooked into a five-game World Series. It's just that remarkable stuff across almost almost every game uh, <laughs> of the series, man. Shane, I know you're on one other show on at least a regular or semi-regular basis. You may even be on a third one that I don't even know about. So tell everybody about that, and then we'll hop off. I haven't branched any farther than that, but I am uh, uh, Yusuf, who used to be uh, – now he's branched out so many times that he barely has time to – do the show that I'm on with them, but uh, we do uh, that Thursday thing. It goes on right before uh, Thursday night football starts at seven o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it's myself, Yusuf, and then uh, Herb from the Herb and Raj uh, podcast. Uh, they do all sorts of uh, Alabama football. Uh, so far, it's been great. Uh, it's, you know, NFL packed and, uh, you know, Yusuf and I get to, pick on each other again so it's been a tough go for him with the Giants and the Yankees neither of them being able to play defense or score runs so it's been uh it's been a tough go for him so 
most of our audience will remember Yusef Marshall, who was on the show up until uh, you know a few weeks ago. Love him. Um, I don't even know if US, Yusef drinks or not, but if he does, I can't think of somebody who might be drinking more right now than him being a fan of the Giants and the Yankees and et cetera. I don't think any of his teams are doing well right now. So love you, Yusef. Wish you the best. All right. That is it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Austin and uh, uh, Shane, as always, for being on. We'll see you all next week. Enjoy the NFL. Have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.